A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, Ask for a sign from the Lord your God. Let it be deep as the netherworld and high as the sky. But Ahaz answered, I will not ask. I will not tempt the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Listen, O house of David. Is it not enough for you to carry a people, to weary people? Must you also weary my God? Therefore the Lord himself will give you this sign. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There is a cute story that used to circulate among Catholic circles. It told of an Italian peasant woman touchingly simple in her piety. And it seems that a clever communist had proved to her by all manners of rigorous argument that there could not possibly be a God. All right, she responded. There is no God, but we always have the mother of God. We always have the mother of God. This is a good rule, especially for the month of May, which we are now in. Mary's month, or it used to be. I have mentioned before how devotion to Mary does not play the strong role in Catholic living that it did a generation ago. And several influences have been at work in this. We are trying to connect an old exaggeration and imbalance, the feeling that Mary is more approachable than Jesus, that through her we can sneak into heaven past a God of strict justice, that if Jesus won't get you in, Mary will. There used to be a joke I remember told years ago about Jesus meeting St. Peter one morning and saying, Peter, I notice there are a number of sinners roaming here in heaven, which I question or not whether they should be in purgatory. How is it possible that they were allowed to get in? And Peter responds, it's your mother. When they can't get in the front door, they come about around the back and she lets them in. Many modern women do not find in Mary the role model their mothers did. Times have changed. People are different. Her problems are not ours, they say. Even her son seems to be a cut above our children. And finally, people argue that Mary and Joseph had a marriage that our age just doesn't buy. There was no sex, no passion. Probably they didn't argue. So this is all heavy stuff, and it's good material for a lively discussion. But it would really be tragic if such reasons kept us from seeing that it is what makes Mary the model she is, not only for mothers, not only for women, but for every Christian, whatever the sex or stripe. To begin with, Mary was a mother. Her child was conceived of the Holy Spirit, yes. But that child grew in her and from her. She had to give him birth in a strange town, had to steal him away to Egypt to save him from a nervous king. This child puzzled her, worried her, and when at 12 he slipped away to argue theology in a temple, she had to stay at home or stand apart with the crowd, not only when he multiplied bread and raised the dead, but when his townspeople cast him from a cliff. His enemies shouted he had a devil. His friends and relatives insisted he was mad. She felt as helpless as any mother when a disciple betrayed him with a kiss when soldiers lashed his back and nailed him to the wood, when he cried out as if forsaken by the father, 
when he breathed his last and she held him in her arms as not so long ago she had rocked him in Bethlehem. And yet, believe it or not, mothering God in the flesh is not Our Lady's chief claim to fame, not in God's eyes. More important than sheer motherhood was what St. Augustine realized when he wrote, Mary was more blessed because she laid hold of faith in Christ than because she conceived the flesh of Christ. Her motherly relationship to him would have been of no use to Mary had she not carried Christ in her heart more happily, even then she bore him in her body. She conceived Christ in her mind before she conceived him in her womb. It was by faith she gave him birth. It was by faith she conceived him. That is why the Second Vatican Council called Mary the mother of Jesus, the church's outstanding model in faith and love. Model not in what she did, but how she lived in Nazareth. Few of us pass our day the way she did. Her endless legacy to all of us is her faith and her love. Not some vague, I believe, not some emotional, I love you. She lived what Jesus extolled. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. This is Mary, preeminently the woman who hears what God is saying and acts on it. She listened, she said yes, not only to the ecstasy of Bethlehem, but to the sword of Calvary and beyond. Always and everywhere her response was the same. Let it happen to me according to your word. No human short of Jesus has listened more lovingly, responded more generously than Mary. Is she a role model? Yes, if you want to experience what loving faith is, if you want to touch what faithful love is, then have a love for Mary. <laughs>